Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video I'm going to be answering a question that I get asked quite often, and specifically I get asked this question when I talk about the subject of taking radios that are set up, or, or radios that are designed for the amateur radio service, or ham radio, and doing an expanded transmit on those so that they can then use uh, or be used for services such as GMRS and MERS and, and whatnot. And the question that I get asked is, is it okay to use the antenna on the radio for that expanded transmit capability. So if the radio is designed for ham radio, can I use the antenna on the radio for GMRS? And I will say this, um, when it comes to factory antennas, I can't give you an answer that, that is correct across the board because each particular company designs their own antennas for their radios. Some you may be able to use for GMRS. Some um, you might not be able to and you're going to have to individually test that factory antenna and see if it's a good idea or not for you. And SWR is a real quick and dirty way of estimating whether or not it's a good idea. Now it doesn't tell the entire story of, of resonance uh, but what it does do is tell you if you're going to create a, a, you know, a high or unsafe SWR condition by running that signal through that antenna because that means the antenna is not matched to the radio so you have an impedance mismatch. But when it comes to aftermarket antennas it's a little easier to answer that question because the aftermarket antennas um, you can test a certain antenna and that antenna can be applied to a lot of different radios so it's an easier question to answer. Now since most of us take and upgrade our antennas anyway on our radios um, Oftentimes when I'm asked this question, it relates specifically to a certain aftermarket antenna type. And the one that comes up most often is, should I use the Nagoya NA771 or the Nagoya NA771 Golf if I'm going to be doing this? Now, um, I'm going to give you two answers to this question. One is purely anecdotal and experience driven, and the other is going to be scientific. So anecdotally I can tell you that I have for years now used the NA771 on ham radios that have had expanded transmit and I've used those for not only the amateur radio service but GMRS and they work just fine. In fact I cannot tell the difference between the 771 Golf and the 771 in terms of performance on any given radio. They both work sort of exactly the same within GMRS. But I will say this, I don't put 771 Golf antennas on ham radios. Um, it just sort of seems to me like this is GMRS specific, so it's going to give better performance for that, and it's designed for GMRS only radios, so I just use them in that direction. And sort of my rule of thumb is this, if I have a ham radio, I put a good ham radio antenna on it, and that ham radio antenna I put on there also seems to work just fine for GMRS. If I have a GMRS only radio, so such as the, the case of this KG935 Golf, this only does GMRS, it'll receive ham, but you never transmit on amateur radio frequencies with this radio. So if I put an aftermarket antenna on there, I tend to put something like an NA771 Golf that's designed for GMRS. But Back to the original question, anecdotal experience. Between the two, just can't tell the difference when we're talking GMRS. Um, sort of seems to be about the same level of performance. So this radio receives and transmits just as well on GMRS as this one does. And this one has an NA771 on it. This one has a 771 Golf. Okay, so that's a story. Um, but again, it's based only on anecdotal experience. There is a second answer to this question that is more scientific. And what I have done is I have tested both of these antennas on my Rig Expert AA600 antenna analyzer. In testing those, I generated um, the actual test files for these, and I can bring those up, and we can actually look at these from a, a scientific perspective and see just how similar or dissimilar they might be. So this will actually, um, so we have the anecdotal answer, which is good to go. Use the 771 for golf, or for uh, use the 771 for ham and GMRS, and 
you'll you'll be just fine. But I'd rather show you something that sort of scientifically measures it, so you can actually see. You know, aside from my anecdotal experience, what does an actual scientific testing tool reveal about these antennas? So at this point, what I want to do is break, and I'm going to fire up the computer, and I'm going to bring up my antenna analyzer software, or my antenna scope software for this, uh, and we'll take a look at this and see if the science actually matches the anecdotal experience. So hang on just a second, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are with a uh, screenshot view of my computer, and specifically we're looking at the antenna scope software for my Rig Expert Antenna Analyzer. And I've got two files open here, and these are from the scans that I did on the Nagoya NA771 and the Nagoya NA771 Golf antennas. And what this is going to do when I click here is give us kind of a graphical representation of the performance of this antenna. Now, this is the SWR measurement. But uh, what we're looking for is the low points on this graph. So this is going to tell us that the Nagoya NA771 on the VHF side of things is at its best at 149.360 megahertz. And when we move to the VHF side, it is at its best at 449.959. You'll note also that the UHF performance is much better on this antenna than the VHF performance and that's typical of a dual band antenna. You'll also note the areas where this antenna is absolutely no good and that's indicated by these areas right here. Now the graph kind of stops at this point but I guarantee you this is going to go up quite a bit higher uh, and it tells you that uh, you definitely are risking probably some damage to your radio um, if you try to transmit within this range with this particular antenna but the areas that um, interest us because again this is a dual band amateur radio service antenna is we've got uh, a, a good reading for VHF and a good reading for UHF. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the NA771 Golf. And here we have an orange line and it's a little bit different um, but one thing you'll, that you'll note, go ahead and highlight that, when we get into the VHF realm of you know 146 to 148 and here we have 146.020 um, it's a little bit higher in terms of readout than the NA771 but it's it's effectively usable in this range but actually seems to get better around 172 which uh, isn't particularly useful to us but there you go, that's how it uh, acts in VHF. When we get over to UHF though, particularly within the spectrum that we would use this antenna for GMRS, uh, here at 463.320, great reading, and this little tiny area right here, this really is the only area that concerns us for use with this antenna. And this is all pretty good stuff right here. But the story really uh, gets revealed when you overlay both of the readouts on top of each other. So if I click here, I now have a look at both antennas kind of side by side in terms of readout. And you'll note that they're kind of similar, actually. Now, they're, they're different in some fundamental ways. For instance, the, uh, you know, the 771 right here is producing much better performance on the VHF end of the spectrum that would, it, uh, would concern us for amateur radio use. Um, but we're talking this is actually a fairly small difference in terms of performance but admittedly the green line which represents the 771 is much better than the uh, than the line for the 771 Golf. Now when we get over here to the uh, the GMRS spectrum you'll note that there's a little bit of a crossover point right here at 463 they're effectively the same antenna. Now we're talking a range of 462 to 467 megahertz. Now it does, beyond 463, start tracking upwards. So at 466, which is getting close to 467, it's on its way up, but the difference between the two isn't isn't such that it would be a significant dip in performance. Um, but there is a nice little area of crossover. Now, of course, um, as I mentioned, the 771 Golf starts getting better beyond 463, whereas the 771 starts getting worse beyond 463. But again, this is a very small area of measurement right here. So what this story tells us is this. You can definitely use the NA771 
not only for dual band amateur radio applications and it's very good in in that in that realm but it's also perfectly usable for GMRS so if I was if I were to have a radio that was an expanded transmit ham type radio that was set up so it could transmit on GMRS if necessary I would have no problem whatsoever using the NA771 as a good all-around all-purpose antenna for both services now of course if I wanted you know to exploit the absolute best I could possibly get in terms of GMRS performance for a GMRS only antenna yeah, uh, definitely I'd, I'd go with the NA771 Golf because I don't need this this over here at all. It, it doesn't even matter to me. So the better performer, yes, is definitely the NA771 Golf if you're talking strictly GMRS performance. But we're talking a very small amount of, or, or very small increase in performance. So if you're using an NA771 antenna, just understand it's perfectly fine to use that for GMRS as well at least it has been for me and this readout right here can kind of back that up um, fairly adequately and if you think about it let's go back to that NA771 again so if we're talking GMRS performance and it's a little bit of an uptick right here little wee bit of an uptick it's still lower than the best possible performance you can get out of the uh, VHF side of things so uh, again, I, I propose that the NA771 is a perfect all-arounder for both services. And if you're GMRS only, yeah, of course, just go with the GMRS, you know, the 771 Golf for GMRS purposes. So I hope that kind of lays that uh, that issue to rest, and you can rest assured that uh, you know you're you're good to go if you've chosen the NA771 as an all-arounder. So with that, I've talked about this enough. I thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.